So certain equations that are not really quadratic can be thought of in such a way that they can be solved as a quadratic. And those equations are said to be in quadratic form. Now, when you're thinking of solving a quadratic, you're saying, well, I would like to factor it or use the quadratic formula. So again, as long as you have an equation that's in quadratic form, this can be done. So we need to make sure we understand what quadratic form is. And so we're going to take a look at our generic quadratic equation here. Okay, and we know this is quadratic because of the square being the biggest degree. And what we want to take note of here is the relationship of the exponents. Okay, this middle term, you know, this is in descending order. So the middle term, its exponent is 1 here, which is half of the biggest exponent. And when those two things happen, along with no variable in the third term, it would be in quadratic form. So again, the first term, its exponent is double the second term, and then no variable in the third term. So some examples of equations that are in quadratic form would be a to, uh, times x to the fourth plus b times x squared plus c equals zero. And again, four is double two, and then there's no variable here. Okay, so any arrangement where the biggest degree is double the next degree is going to be what we're looking for. So again, we have a to the si or x to the sixth plus b times x to the third plus C, that's quadratic form. Now we don't need just an X here, okay? So maybe you would have something that looks like this. Okay, and this all is being squared. The next term has it all being to the first power and then it doesn't show up in the third power. So again, this is quadratic, uh, you know, an equation in quadratic form, and you could solve anything that looks like these or anything similar with this situation going on uh, the same way as you would our original quadratic equation. And again, that would be by factoring or the quadratic formula. For another example of what quadratic form would look like, and this one shows up a lot, and it's not as intuitive as the others, would be this. Okay, now at first glance, maybe it doesn't make any sense because you're saying, well, you know, we have an exponent of 1 here, and then we have the square root of x. And so something that you want to understand is that you can have... Uh, uh, rational exponents and rational includes fractions so you can definitely raise any number to a fractional exponent and the square root of x is the same as x to the one half okay and so then what we would have is x to the first x to the one half and then no x at all so yes again this is quadratic form So really, there's a, a lot of different ways a quadratic form could show up. You know, you could have ax to the third plus bx to the three halves plus c equals zero. And again, you're in quadratic form because this middle term, the exponent there is half of the first term, and then there's no variable over here. And again... If that situation happens, you're in good shape because it's very easy to solve for. And we're going to do a couple of examples so that you can see. Okay, so for our first example, we're going to take this uh, equation. And you notice that it's raised to the fourth power. Uh, but it is in quadratic form because we have uh, our first exponent is 4. Our next exponent is 2, which is half of 4. And then we don't have a variable at all in our third term. So it is in quadratic form, so we can go about solving it. Now, one of the things you want to keep in mind is that we better come up with 
four answers. Okay, again, that's what this little number is telling us is that there's potentially four answers to our equation here. But let's change it into something that we're more used to looking at. So we're going to change this into a squared term, then a term to the first power, and again, a term with no variable. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say, well, let's just say that x to the fourth is u squared. And then x squared is u. Okay? And you're allowed to do this as long as you remember to come back and solve for x. Okay? We have basically the same situation, right? 4 is twice as much as 2, and 2 is twice as much as 1. So let's just substitute that in. And so we would have u squared minus 9u plus 8 equals 0. Something that we're used to looking at. And now let's try to factor it. And this one does factor pretty easily. Okay, because we're talking about numbers that multiply to give us 8 and add to give us negative 9. And those would numbers would be negative 1 and negative 8. We're going to set both of these equal to 0. And so u equals 1 and u equals 8. Now here's a place where people make a mistake. You know, you feel like you're done right here. But you have to remember that you're really solving for x, not for this made up u. Okay? So we can check over here what we were saying before. And we notice that u is the same as x squared. So now we better substitute back. So x squared really equals 1. And also x squared equals 8. So now when we take the square root of x squared and 1, we get x equaling plus or minus 1, positive or negative 1, right? Remember, when you take the square root, you better get a positive and a negative, okay? And just the same with this other equation. When we take the square root, x is going to be a positive and a negative square root of 8, okay? And I'm going to simplify that down a little bit. Right, the square root of 8 is the same as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, which is the same as 2 square root of 2. And so we can simplify these two answers as a positive and a negative 2 radical 2. Okay, and so there's our four answers, and that's what we were really looking for. Okay, here's the situation where we have this radical, and again, this is in quadratic form. This is x to the first, and this is x to the one-half. There's no x here, so yes, it is in quadratic form. So let's do this u substitution little trick. Okay, and so just make sure you're doing it in the right order. Our first term, x to the first, will make equivalent to u squared. And our second radical x will be equivalent to u. Okay, and again, just make sure you're being careful and understanding what your exponents are telling you. So now when we substitute this in, we would have u squared minus 3u minus 4 equals 0. And now let's check to see if we can factor it. And we can because there are two factors of negative 4 that can combine to give us negative 3. So let's do it that way. Those two numbers are negative 4 and positive 1. We set both of these factors equal to 0. And solve, and we get u equaling 4 and u equaling negative 1. Now again, remember, you're not solving for u, so you're actually solving for x. And so we have to come back and use this here. Now, there's going to be a red flag popping up here in a second, but what we have is the square root of x equaling 4. So we square both sides, x equals 16. And then we have the square root of x equaling negative 1. Okay, now, with the exception of imaginary numbers, you're never going to be able to get a square root of anything giving you a negative 1. 
or negative anything. So this is a really a red flag, and so we're going to end up checking to make sure that both of these equa uh, both of these solutions work. But we'd still square both of these sides and have x equaling one. Okay, but we're always you know you always should be checking for extraneous solutions, and again, an extraneous solution is basically one that you have solved you know you solved everything correctly but then that answer doesn't really work and really an answer to an equation is a number that you plug into it and it does work as in gives you a true statement so let's go over here on the side and just make sure we check real quick we'll check with 16 first and so we'd have 16 minus 3 times the square root of 16 minus 4 and see if that gives us 0 okay square root of 16 is 4 so this is really 16 minus 12 minus 4 equals 0. And that would be 4 minus 4 equals 0. And so that one's okay. So this is definitely a solution. But let's try the other solution here. We have 1 minus 3 times radical 1 minus 4. Okay. Square root of 1 is 1. So then we have 1 minus 3 minus 4. And that does not equal zero, right? That would give us a negative six. So this is not a solution. It's an extraneous solution. So really, there's only one solution to this one. So always keep uh, an eye out, especially when you're dealing with a square root. So for the last example here, we have uh, this equation. And, you know, we have a bunch of things going on. We have all kinds of exponents going on. But again, if you got to be able to look at this whole quantity here as one, you know, kind of like one variable that's being squared. And then the same quantity is now raised to the first. And then it doesn't show up in this third term. So this is still quadratic form. Um, we're going to have a bunch of potential answers here because we really we're going to have like potential of four. But let's see what happens here. And I'm going to do that u substitution again. And this time I'm going to say, let's let this x squared minus 1 squared, let's say that's equal to u squared. And then x squared minus 1 equaling u. Okay, and so now we can make it look a little bit easier by rewriting it as u squared minus u minus 2 equals zero. So this one should factor, but if it didn't factor, we can always use the quadratic formula. Or if you feel more comfortable with the quadratic formula, go ahead and use that. Just remember that you're solving for x, not u. And so after, you know, after we factor or use the quadratic formula, you better do this, you know, resubstitute in the original information that you have over here. So we're going to set this up to factor again. And we are going to use negative 2 and 1, right? Positive 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And so now we're going to set each factor equal to 0. We'll have u equaling negative 1 and u equaling 2. But now we're going to substitute in, right? We have this information here. So really what we have right now is x squared minus 1 equaling negative 1 and x squared minus 1 equaling 2. Okay, so we're just going to solve this and this is nice and you know nice and easy. We're just going to add 1 to both sides on this first one and get x squared equaling 0. Take the square root of both sides and have x equaling 0. Okay. Normally we would have a plus and minus in front when we take the square root, but 0 is neither positive nor negative, so it's just, you know, it's just 0. Okay. Same kind of idea on this second part. We're going to add 1 to both sides. x squared equaling 3. We're going to take the square root of both sides, and now we are going to get our positive and negative square root of 3. You should always check, you know, to make sure that your answers satisfy the original equation. 
uh, but I'm pretty confident that these two do work. Okay, I couldn't resist doing one more example, so we're going to take a look at this. And, you know, just because there are negative exponents doesn't mean anything is different. You know, still negative 1 is half of negative 2, and there is no m in this third, uh, third term, so this is quadratic form. And, you know, I suggest always doing this little u substitution. Um, and to make it a little bit easier on us, you know, so u squared is going to be our m to the negative second, and u is going to be our m to the negative first, so that we can rewrite this as u squared minus 6u plus 4 equals 0. And ideally, we would factor this, and, but if we check, you know, there are no factors of 4 that can combine to give us negative 6. So, and this is why I wanted to do one more example, right? We have to use the quadratic formula to get anywhere at all, okay? Now, remember, once we're done, we're going to have to come back and substitute this information back in. But we're going to say that u equals negative b, so 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 6 squared is 36, minus 4, times a times c all over 2 times 1. Okay, so when we simplify this, we would get 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 16 all over 2, which is 6 plus or minus the square root of 20 over 2. Now we can rewrite 20 as the square root of 4 times the square root of 5 and so this is really 6 plus or minus 2 radical 5 over 2. And since all three of these numbers are divisible by 2, we'll take it one more step and get 3 plus or minus the square root of 5. But we are not done yet because our original equation had to do with m's, okay? And so we had to come back and substitute this part in. So we have really m to the negative first equaling 3 plus or minus radical 5, okay? And so, you know, if you're really good with your negative exponents, you could kind of just jump straight to uh, the answer. But let's work it out, you know. Remember, a negative exponent moves whatever it is connected with to the other part of the fraction. So really, this is 1 over m equaling 3 plus or minus radical 5. We need to get our m up in the numerator, so we're going to cross multiply and get 1 equaling m times 3 plus or minus radical 5. And now we're going to divide both sides by this whole part here and finally get m equaling 1 over 3 plus or minus radical 5. Now technically this is not simplified. Um, we haven't really talked about that yet, but you're not really supposed to leave a radical in the denominator, um, but there's a bunch of steps, and it's called rationalizing the denominator that we're not really worried about right right now. In the long run, you'd want to do a little bit more, uh, but this is a good answer as of now.